online, on digital, and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC Radio 2. Russell Brand. You're listening to Russell Brand live on Radio 2 from New York. I've got a migraine. And That's, a mouthful of food. Yeah, that was the strokes New York City Dolls. I'm eating food because I've got a migraine. I'm trying to stave it off by sustaining my body. Because remember, last migraine I had was live earth. That was a bit of a bonkers broadcast. And now we've just added the proms. That's why we're on at this unusual time. I, I hope you enjoyed the proms if you were listening to it. Although, I imagine if you were listening to the proms, you're now scrambling <laughs> towards your radio. To get that off right now. And if you are listening to this, you'd have turned on the proms before. Oh, my word. We're living in the olden days. We're steeped in tradition. All that Union Jack business. That's what I can't go over the proms. You were, oh. It's racist to wave Union Jack. Yes. Also, I'm here with uh, Matt Morgan. I'd like to say he's in charge of the switches, but since now we're in New York and all of the technical matters are handled in London, is essentially just a man. A man like any other. How are you, a man? A man like you. But sat down. Yeah, I'm good. Good, right, OK. You've got a bit of uh, rice cake stuck to your I'm face. I'm sure I have, Matthew. It's a miracle I'm even standing up. Remove I mean, I'm, I'm in debilitating pain. I will not. I will leave that rice cake there as a monument to those that have fallen. That is like the grave of the unknown soldier. That is, <laughs> there's many things that have gone on. And that little bit of rice cake is a reminder. Now, we are live, but you can't see us on a webcam, But there, because there isn't one. But let me tell you this. I am stood here in honour of Howard Stern, nude, sad stern, <laughs> Howard Stern, I'm a little bit stern but I'm also quite malleable, I'm quite quite nude and there are strippers outside, that was really a cleansing the earth of the proms vibe. Matt, have you, you went to something like the proms once, didn't you? No, I did not. What was that thing you went to and you said an old man burped? Oh, that was... Uh, Sounded that was, like the proms to me. That was from <laughs> my cultural review. Yeah. Which is going to come back to the radio show pretty soon. The cultural review, Matthew, was what could only be described as an excuse for you to go places for nothing, <laughs> which is why you're trying to bring it back. You've got absolutely no interest what, in the content I'm, of the radio show. I wanted show. to go to the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah, I had to go there for a classical concert. What were you doing there? Ah, oh, precious drugs. Yes, bring them, bring them. Ah, oh, right. My migraine, migraine drugs, drugs have arrived. Yeah, migraine drugs, not bad evil drugs. Um, I can't see the colours of these, so can you take those out? I need two pinks, two yellow. Uh, other migraine drugs are available. Are I they? Think you do want two pinks. Yeah, yeah, two pinks, two yellows. You can't muck about with migraines, Matt. It's a, it's an argument you cannot win. We will be talking to. Has Terry Wogan been knighted yet? If no. he ain't, why the hell hasn't no, he? Because he's has, Irish. He's Irish, so he can't be. Uh, this we will be talking to Sir Terry Wogan. Yeah, <laughs> in a moment. He's going to be live on the radio show because he's been presenting the proms. He's going to be talking to us. He'll be listening, won't he? He's now speeding through London away from the Albert Hall, probably with one wry eye raised. You know how he does. I like it when he does Eurovision song contests. That's why we love Wogan most, isn't it? Well, I need some water for my trucks. He's a brilliant man. There's a thing of water there. Sorry about that. Remember, this show is a bit erratic at the best of times, but now think of all the variables. I've got a migraine. We're in New York. Matt's not in charge of the buttons. We're, it's very close to September the 11th anniversary. There's a lot of tension. A lot of tension, right? Let me just get these druggy wags down my old necky poos. Right, that's what's sounded Hey, the rice cake fell off. Mm. It's going to be a great show. <laughs> the rice cake fell off. <laughs> oh, no, bring back the rice cake. Some people say that was holding this show together. We've got some fantastic things coming up. As I said, we're going to be talking to Terry Wogan. All of the music will be themed around New York. It's a bit weird. I always think this, right? New York is basically a new version of York. But you, York, it's just got a cathedral. Hey, Come here, there's loads of stuff. York used to be our capital city. What?! What was them oh, days yeah. like? They must have been crackers. It's a walled city. It's cool there. Is it? Know I know there's a, you've never been there. You don't like up north. You've admitted as much. You said you've got n no oh, desire to connect a with the north. Thing, generalisation. Whereas I am a great lover of the north of England. I liked it in Blackpool. Yeah, we had a great time in Blackpool. We will be talking to the mayor of Blackpool a little bit later because there was a. Well, some of you that listen to the show will have noticed a great deal of sexual tension between me and the mayor of Blackpool. You Not so much. Forced him to kiss you. Yeah, I did, and I'm glad I did because I learned now that homosexuality is not the barren place I'd often imagined it to be, but a fruitful, lustrous land full of joy and pleasure. Don't say that when you're living in my hotel room. Me and Matt are staying at the famous Chelsea Hotel. We have been sleeping together in the same bedroom like a latter-day 
sort of punk Steptoe and Son. Yeah, it's not like Morecambe and Wise because Morecambe and Wise get on. <laughs> so it's like Steptoe and Son. <laughs> you ain't bringing nobody back, are you? Oh dear, can't you let me live in peace, Dad? It's like that. We really squabble and it's argue. It's a hellhole, isn't it, that hotel? The Chelsea Hotel, right? Now, Boiling up. Boiling not. The Chelsea Hotel is famous because Arthur Miller wrote a review from the bridge there. Sid Vicious killed Nancy Sponge in there. What else happened? Leonard Cohen received fellatio from Janis Joplin there on an unmade bed. That's a little bit of a song Arthur called C. Chelsea Clark Hotel. Wrote wrote two. 2001. Arthur C. Clarke wrote 2001. All these people have created these great works of art, stroke murders, and, <laughs> and oral sex in there. And quite frankly, it's a dump. <laughs> Just trying to get anything done. Because like, what it is, is they say, hey, you're staying at the Chelsea Hotel. It's really hip. Well, great. You know, can and I have some room service. No, we don't do it. They don't do don't the do most food, basic. Don't do food, don't do water. Don't do water. You can't get water. That is one of our most basic rights. We're 90% water. Chelsea Hotel, try and get hold of some. They just say, suck it out your own arm. <laughs> suck your own arm. <laughs> Give yourself a love bite. Drink your own blood. Get off on that, you squares. Yeah, and also, the people that work there is an odd conglomeration. It's scary. Of the whole place is scary. Russell, we both had our own separate rooms, but they both, for some reason, got two double beds in them. Hmm. Russell didn't last five minutes in this before he's knocking them up. Can I live with you? <laughs> I just looked around my room, turned around and came straight back downstairs. I thought, I'm not living in there. I'll be I'll be next on the list of people that have done something stupid in there. So murdered my own to, legs. I have to watch him sleeping in his little tiny white toddler's pants. They're not toddler pants, they're my pants. They're not I've not got them off of a toddler. I don't know how that exchange would ever take place. <laughs> I get them directly from a shop. I'll give you all this ice cream. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no way that you could do that without it. Even if it was, I'm simply want the pants. There's no court in the land will go, well, quite clearly, he just wanted the pants it would just look bad it would just look bad okay so why don't we listen to this i think i don't know if this is connected to new york but it sort of reminds me of it. it's tom waits song right it's tom waits and bet midler i really like it but matt you like to under uh, undermine tom waits saying that he sings like mr snuffleupagus out of sesame street and so he's got a few different voices but this one was i don't know why <laughs> i'm singing like this let's go through the alphabet i can't spell Yes, you, you can spell Tom. Sure you can. Spell whiskey. <laughs> w, oh no, I'm too drunk. Uh, <laughs> I like it when he goes, I like it when he goes. You must be reading my mail. Living in a dustbin. <laughs> and why you such a grouch for? I want some cookies. Yeah, well, I like that song. I think, I it's, think it's brilliant and boring touching. and stupid. It's lovely and moving, lovely little story. They're talking to each What's other. What's the story? Well, they've met in a bar, Bette Midler and Tom Waits. They're a couple of people washed up by life, shipwrecked on the shores of their own emotions. She's all broken in her way. He's all broken in his way. He tries to chat her up. She comes back with a bit of wit, and then they discover they're not so different after all. It's very romantic, very moving, very poignant. And Tom Waits is just one of the uh, one of the artists inspired by the... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Snuffleupagus. <laughs> Mr. Snuffleupagus, yes, but also by... Oh, um, Big Bird. <laughs> I'm a Bette Midler. <laughs> also, as well as inspiring, yes, he, he, I mean, Tom Waits, you could argue, is a creation of Jim Henson, but he's a part of the great lineage of American writers and artists what, inspired Ralph used by... Ralph play the piano? Ralph, yes, Ralph too, and that woman whose hair <laughs> looks a bit like spaghetti and Kermit's nephew were all inspired by Jack Kerouac. That's why we're in this country. We're in this country, America, because we're doing a documentary about... Jack Kerouac, right, and uh, his novel on the road, which is 50 years old. That's why me and the, the sort of one day, ages ago, a man wrote this novel, right, about searching for spiritual freedom uh, in the great wide open landscapes of America. 50 years later, I have to share a room with Matt Morgan. <laughs> so if you are a writer, please think about the consequences of your work. You're happy to be in that room. Well, yeah, I suppose so. Rather I'm not than happy. Stalking those phantom ridden corridors where I can hear Nancy Spungen's wails dripping from the walls and can see William Burroughs trundling up and down. There's a bust of William Burroughs, isn't there, in yeah. the lobby of the hotel. It's quite cool. I think it'd be good to go there for a day, but not to live there. There's no air conditioning people in the room. People do live there. Do you know, they, they yeah, said yeah. That people live there for 30 years. Turn what are they the drinking? That's what worries me, these poor people. You know, booze to, to cope with the, the look lack of, of room service, I imagine. And the yeah. Wi-Fi is rubbish. The Wi-Fi is you rubbish. You can't get Wi-Fi at Chelsea you, Hotel. You can't get Wi-Fi. You can't communicate with the world. Right, so other things we've got coming up in this show. We've said, oh, where's Terry? We're trying to ring Wogan. He won't have Terry, will you please answer your phone? We happen to know for a fact he's just been doing the proms. I heard him all mellifluous and like wise cracking his way through the proms. Now we're trying to ring him, get him on the blower. He's not having it, is You've he? You've offended him. 
I haven't offended him. We're always very reverential to that man. <laughs> you aren't. Very reverential. I'm dying. If, if you were in this much pain, the radio show wouldn't be oh, happening. Oh, the headache started. Yes, I'm in agony. But, but often I notice that you, like when you're sat in, because you sit in Wogan's chair, you sometimes just tamper with it and try and get sort of Terry's aromas it's on your fingertips. That, very much the seat of power. I feel safe when we're in Wogan's studio. We feel like we're, you know, on the shoulders of giants. Here, what are we on? Shoulders of perverts like Howard Stern. It's a small little studio, this, isn't it? We're all cooped up in here, you know, but I think it's all right. I quite like it. So if you keep trying to ring Terry. We're here with this young lad, some work experience punk they've give us. What's your name again? Sonny Jim James, is it? What do you want for Christmas? He's a good boy. We've got some bit of a kid we've got here working with us. He can't work none of the buttons. Look, he just picked up the phone. Ring Wogan. How do you know he's not answering it? He's not even American. Where are you from, James? Leeds. Leeds. Look at the state of him. So you should have known about original well, York. Good stuff. That's Wogan's Please phone. Try later. Phone. Or Wogan! Next. Right, send him a message. <laughs> Wogan! Can we, can we leave him a message? Did, 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 if, oh, give us the option. It's, no, it's, no, please no. try again later. Why can't, you can't leave Terry Wogan an answer phone message. Why is that? I wonder. Why Who's his agent? Who is Terry's agent? Who's looking after Wogan? I think his lad looks after him, actually. I've met Terry Wogan's son. He's a lovely lad. Really? Yeah, he looks after Terry Wogan. Terry Wogan's son. The Wogans. They, they keep everything in house. <laughs> That's the way the Wogans work. The Wogans are like the Shogans. You know, they're a very tight-knit community, and if you cross them, they will mess you up. Same with the Shogans, same with the Wogans. So, all right, it doesn't look like we can talk to Terry Wogan, because he simply won't... He's turned off his phone. He's sat in the back of a limousine, speeding away from the Albert Hall. I mean, I'd like to speculate... Blind drunk. Counting his money. Counting, just sat, <laughs> wallowing money. He, took, he probably took his trousers and pads down. <laughs> <laughs> sat in the back of a limo, rinsing himself up in a big bar for money. Shouting out the windows, I reckon. Yeah, holding <laughs> out the windows. Got a job, you lot! <laughs> and shouting at bastards by. <laughs> yeah. He's, well, Terry Wogan, where is he? We need to speak to him. Yeah. He's our spiritual leader. He's very much the Ben Kenobi of Radio 2. We're, the, we're not even Luke Skywalker's, are we? What are we? R2 Sam and C3PO. P-O. You're yeah, R2D2, yeah. I'm C3PO. What, so, camp and... Oh dear, Master Luke. Oh bloody heck, this whole bloody business. Yeah, he was weird. R2D2 is essential to the Star Wars storyline. I know you keep saying that he's a god, but he's not. He's just a little man just trying to cope with life, isn't he? It's quite a powerful theory. Well, it is a powerful theory, but then people that think of theories about Star Wars, all power to them, are a lovely bunch. OK, so let me think about it, the things that we've got to do. We'll t- this, like that show in Blackpool last week... We done. Good, wasn't it? Yeah. We were in Blackpool. We did a show out of an ice cream van. So much could have gone wrong. And yes, <laughs> one girl did lose an eye. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I was throwing ice creams out because I thought, this is a great opportunity. How close am I going to get to being like Willy Wonka? Yes, I can dress like him. Check. But how often am I actually going to get to give out free chocolate bars and candies and that? I was tossing that ice cream out of that van, wasn't I? Great big... But uh, really, a, a, a choc ice is a, just like... You might as well throw a bit of granite at someone really it's about it's the a, way of a mobile phone it's like throwing a mobile phone you wouldn't it's because it's ice cream and like the way ice cream is branded and thought think, ice cream ice cream you scream we all scream for ice cream right but like actually yeah it's like throwing a mobile phone it's, it's like throwing a block so it's struck you know it was once but for legal reasons nobody was injured and for legal reasons and for, 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 for reality, balance of course for the BBC, we must provide balance, so no one was struck in the <laughs> eye with a mobile phone sized and weighted <laughs> object. But in the real world, there's a lot of cyclopses wandering around Blackpool now, <laughs> losing, using them lights to guide the way. Poor souls they are, bless them. Hold on, I've got an email here. It's from Joan, or Joanne, or, well, it's from this this series of letters. Joe, no, J-O-A-N-N, what does that mean? Joanne. Joanne. But why is there no E at the end? She's a maverick. Joanne, the way you live your life, or darling. Or Joan N. We said, j- j- no, well, there's no gap between the end. J-O-A-N-N. What's she say? Hi, Russell, Matt, Mr. G, and little Mr. News. Mr. G is actually in London as well. Mr. G, are you there? Can you talk to us, dear? Yeah, I'm here, yeah. Look at you, sound like a clammy-fisted little pervert. Are you in... Are you in <laughs> yeah, co- I'm here, yeah. yeah, I'm here. What are you doing? Are you in cahoots with Wogan? I'm, in, the pe- I'm enjoying the studio. I'm enjoying the benefits of the, the Wogan space. studio. The I air conditioning, you. the jacuzzi. We've got everything here. You dirty devil. Are you in a bathrobe now wearing stocky... <laughs> I bet you're wearing socks with suspenders around your calves, aren't you? Like Hugh Hefner smoking I'm, a bubble pipe. I'm smoking pipe. a bubble pipe, yeah. <laughs> What about devil. when me, you and G had a jacuzzi together all naked? We don't mention that. Me, Matt oh, and we do, G. Me, 
Matt and G oh, had a naked jacuzzi when we were over in Dublin. And uh, to tell you the truth, it was nice. After a while, you get used to a man's leg brushing against you, don't you? <laughs> what I didn't like was there was a lot of grit on the floor. It was a hot tub rather than a jacuzzi. It was a hot tub up on the... It was Bono's Hotel in um, Dublin. We stayed there. There was a hot tub in this... I stayed in a really nice hotel room. Not like this ram shackle <laughs> grief pit I'm old up in now, right? And there was like a... There was a hot tub on the balcony. Me, Matt and G got in there all naked. All to drinks. The three of us. And we did actually have a frank and open discussion about homosexuality. Did we? Well... We had sex. <laughs> no, we talked about the nature of like sort of saying, oh, I wonder why we don't do it. I was actually trying to angle you had a snorkel on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I call it a snorkel on. That's a euphemism for, for what I actually had. So, hold on, let's, let's read this out. Dear Russell, Matt, Mr. G, and little Mr. Nibs, I don't think he should be included in emails. Shouldn't. What about that preposterous bit in Blackpool where he Just pretended to be lie. hypnotized? We had a hypnotist there who was meant to hypnotize him and I think he was in Moomin Land. Mr. Nibs did the most. Oh, it was obnoxious bit of acting, wasn't it? Terrible. It's ridiculous. Built his part. Built his part up. He used it as an opportunity to touch people. So this is uh, Joe A uh, J O A N N's letter. I just want to say thanks so much for doing the Blackpool Ice Cream Van Show. It was bloody brilliant. It was a psychedelic mix of an episode of Pat Sharp's Funhouse, the olden day kids TV show, and uh, a Radio One road show. My favourite presenters were Liz Kershaw and Bruno Brooks. Bruno Brooks. Bruno Brooks is a man whose name was very much suited for his fi- to his physical p- appearance, I think. Yes. Because, like, he Pug looked... faced a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so now, you... Right, so I might have said some mad things about Wogan, but you've just called Bruno Brooks pug faced So there we are. What did you mean? His, his name looks like his face. Well, what I mean is, Bruno Brooks, it does, does makes you think of a man who's just, like, essentially a spherical. No, he's not spherical. I'm just saying, Bruno Brooks. It makes Bruno me think of a sort of Brooks. bulldog. It makes me think of what it makes me think. It's a Dickensian name, isn't it? Like the way that Charles Dickens' characters have names that indicate their uh, personality traits. Bill Sykes. Bill Sykes. Bill Sykes could never be. Oh, hello, it's Bill Sykes here. Yeah, but he'd be called William Sykes, and then he could. I think he'd be called Willie Sickle. If he was, if that's his behaviour. Oh, it's Willie Sickle. Uh, Willie Sickle. Oliver, you've got to be careful. And he wouldn't have a bulldog anymore. He'd have a different type of dog. He'd have, he'd have one of them cats with no hair on it and he'd drag it around on a bit of tinsel. What, have you got Wogan on the phone? You're joking. What? Oh, that lad, that lad here, we've got we've got a lad, James, he's crouched on the floor, he's got a thumb in his ear hole. I think he's quieter if he's lower and nearer the floor. Why is he crouching like that, squatting like a little naked chimp? Horrible sight, look at him, he's got his thumb Terry. in his ear hole, look at us, we're in, we're in, in America. Have you got Terry Wogan on the phone? Well, who are you That's talking to? He's doing a personal to? call. No, no, no. He's doing a personal call. <laughs> who are you Never talking mind. to? This is Radio 2, this is the most, I mean, I know you live in America, but Radio 2 is the biggest, most powerful radio station in Europe. And this is, look at him just blathering on. What are you doing, James? Hand me that phone. Who is it? Who are you t- Mark? You're talking to Mark, Mark Wogan. Wogan. Son of Wogan. Mark Wogan, son of Wogan. It's Russell. Mark. Mark. Uh, can you make him come through the desk? Hello, Mark. Hello, Mark. Hello. Mark Wogan, it's Russell. Are you all right? I'm all right, Russell. How are you doing? Oh, very well, thank you very much. Uh, yes, it all is well. Is, is everything OK with your father? We was hoping to talk to him. No, because I thought you were going to speak to him before before ten forty five. He's he's at an age where he's in bed by now. Oh no! Oh, no. oh is he all right though? He's not upset, is he, yeah, son? No, he's, he's, no, no, he's had a lovely evening. Did he enjoy the proms? Yeah, no, it was a great evening. We've all been there. Uh, did you really? Did it go? What was it? The last night of the proms? Was uh, it? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, because they beamed <laughs> into the park. Sorry, what happened? Yeah, it's in the park, isn't it? They beam it into the park. They just beam it into the park. In the park. Oh, my yeah. word. Well, this makes our ice cream van stunt look pretty small time, doesn't it? <laughs> Terry Wogan, Albert Hall, well, beamed into Hyde Park. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the ice cream thing has a charm of its own. It certainly does, doesn't it? We wouldn't belittle that. Is, is, everything, is everything OK, though? We, it, he's not disappointed and angry that we didn't get through to him. No, 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 he's fine. He's would, fine. Would, I mean, I, do, I, do, I don't know, to be honest, because what, what I, I le- I, he left at ten. Yes. And I, and I knew he'd be home in bed. Right. I, uh, I knew he'd be at home in bed by about quarter to eleven, you see. So Would you give... Well, th- I'm sorry we didn't get through in time. It's just I've got a migraine. Will you give him a message of love from us, Mark? Of course I will. Well, thank you. And also, is it is it everything still working out with the uh, Wogan and Son agency relationship? It's, 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 it's got its challenges, of course. It must have know? its challenges. Because but, but, but we 
soldier on regardless. Thank God you do. I mean, you know, the, 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 as a team, it's pretty invincible what you're doing. And thank you very much. Will you give your, will you give our love to Terry, please, when you next speak to him, Mark? I will do. I will do. And he will undoubtedly send you lots of love as he does love you. Oh, thank you. That's that's what we're in that's it for. Why, that's why. That's why he said yes doing the show. Oh, no, I wish we hadn't missed him. But in the, at the end of the day, we've got through to you, Mark Wogan, who is the yeah. chuckling puppeteer behind Terry Wogan. Terry Wogan don't utter a sound without Mark Wogan's say-so. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the reality behind that relationship. Mark, yeah. thank you very much although, for your time. Although deeply disappointing for your, for your listeners. To hell with those guys, you know, frankly. No, no, they're, they're the lifeblood of what you do. Oh, no, no, we don't mind. They can, we can take <laughs> them or leave them, the old listeners. And that's one thing we've learned from your dad. No, OK. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, Mark. Have a lovely evening. We certainly shall. Take it easy. Cheers, Cheers mate. Bye-bye right. now. Bye-bye. That must be hard, what? being your dad's agent. Being your dad's agent. Imagine being my dad's agent, Ron Brandt. I'm his agent. Very difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard to know where the boundaries are yeah. with family. Well, let's practice it out, right? Who are you going to be, the dad or the son? You be the... What, Wogan or Brand? Hmm. All right, we're just this fictional people <laughs> called uh, uh, Wogan Brand, right? Yeah. And I'm I'm the agent and you're the, the talent. And, oh, the, and that's so how I'm it goes. The yeah, you're the father. Because uh, you'll be good at playing that part, and I'm the agent of you. Uh, all right, Dad, how are you today? Not bad. Uh, right, well, we've got... Got me any more work? <laughs> yes, actually, I have. <laughs> I've got some good things for you. We've got to do a little uh, public appearance, actually. I'm not doing it. What? Why? Oh, Dad, please. And also, I want better taxis in future. All right, well, I'll get you. Also, Dad, um, I started having these certain urges lately. I look at a girl, and I'll see them. You know them upper jumper? she got bumps. Oh, uh, at... yes, I was wondering when we'd have to have this little chat yeah i get feelings urges i could call them yeah, it wouldn't work would it no already they, we've crossed the line i want to know about puberty you want to know about taxis you I know i don't think uh, terry wogan's son is 14 though i think you'll find he is 14 <laughs> next week a happy birthday to you mark wogan keep up that wonderful work and uh, those jumper bumps as we call them are going to be a lot of fun that's something for you to look forward to uh me and my friend continues J O A N. Email? Well, we've been, it's not like the email's been taken up all the time. We've been sidetracked by the Wogans. One Wogan's there, one Wogan's not there. The Wogans are playing mind games. We can't let them destroy us, Matt. Although we're not bonded by blood, we're bonded by something far, far deeper. Living in the same room. That's right. And misery. Misery. Misery unites us. Me and my friend, says Joanne, we're on the front row, right outside your ice cream van hatch. <laughs> I'm out. Oh. Oh, what are you doing outside my van hatch? That hatch. <laughs> That hatch, that hatch was nothing but trouble you because the hatch. Open it, and then yeah. when you did open it, it would trap your finger in the it other end. It pinched me. That it hatch. hurt me. I was you, mucking about. Oh, you dirty hatch! Get your fingers off my hatch! Uh, you, I was right outside the ice cream van hatch, says Joanne. You threw a box of Solero ice creams. Other frozen sweet treats are available. That's hers. At my head, and I ended up with vanilla ice all over the back of my head. I never realised that ice lollies hurled through the air could hurt quite so much. Anyway, it's a great night. We drove from North Wales to see. It was well worth the four-hour round trip. You're looking very good, chaps. Thank you very much. What was the sandcastle like inside, by the way? We were, um, in, while we were oh, doing that radio show, we were operating inside from inside a leisure centre called the Sandcastle. That had all sort of like tunnels and amazing. fumes and slides in there. Not fumes, flumes. Flumes. Uh, but there were some fumes from the chlorine. It was really nice in there. I wanted to have a go on some of the things. I wanted to do it in our pants. We got sidetracked. Damn. Why did we get sidetracked, Matt? What was wrong with us? I can't remember anymore what no, happened. I've Nothing, I think. <laughs> I'm here with Matthew Morgan. You all right, Matthew? Very well. Good, Enjoying good. Enjoying New York. Oh, isn't it nice here in New York? Although I do have a migraine in case you're worried about why my personality's odd. I've taken a lot of migraine medication. I feel unusual, but I feel OK. Yeah, is it OK in New York? Isn't it a big giddy yeah, blur really like of activity? It. Why? Move here. You won't be welcome here. It will chew you up. A city like won't. New York. Oh, Matthew. The bell of the ball. You'll be a penniless rent boy within an hour. Way. Poor sausage. No, I'm sure you'll do very well out here. Um, before this show, of course, was the proms. That's why we we're on an unusual time, presented by Terry Wogan, the National Institution, whom we deeply adore and respect. And who is now in bed. He's now all tucked up nicely in bed. Do you think he's in bed or do you think he goes somewhere else? Of course he does. He goes out. He's probably out now. 
bare chested I imagine like he's got his shirt off and he's drinking whiskey straight from the bottle and he's just sort of shadow boxing anything there just show <laughs> like that and get people to punch him in the stomach go on punch me in the stomach like that and takes off his stomach they're tight then you have to punch him in it uh, dear Russell and Matt says a very drunk guy at Parsons I've just been watching the proms on BBC One and despite not being 62 I actually really enjoyed it not only that I feel blue be proud to be British because he's Pressed B instead of D. Blue be proud to be British. Seeing all them flags and hearing land of hope and glory, I feel so much love towards this beautiful colony. I'm going to ask you the blow question. Can you do... What's, what's a colony? This ain't... What, well, America's a colony. We're England no. and Britain in a colony. It's the empire. It's the seat of the empire. Can you do Gosh, something... Worse than him. <laughs> can you do something during the show which will make Britain's, Britain both feel and look amazing above all other countries? Look... What? How can we do that, you loony? I'm I mean, in it. Oh, look, it continues. I've had a few drinks, so I apologise if this email doesn't make much sense. I'm blueby drunk. <laughs> I'm blueby drunk. I'm off my blueby brain. <laughs> I'm fobbing pashed out of my broom backs. <laughs> Well done to England football. So England won 3 0. I don't know much about that. Someone send me a detailed match report, please, of what happened. Uh, email us at uh, Russ. We're live, so you can text us. You can text us on 88291. 88291. I always nearly 8, say 88291. 88291. Or you can uh, email us at russell.brad at bbc.co.uk. You can't ring us, though, because we're under a lot of pressure at work. Uh, well done to England football cricket teams. Another reason to be proud. Loving the first part of the show. Guy Parsons, you big drunk patriot thank you very much for your email I did enjoy it nonetheless now what are the important things that we have to tell people about our lives in New York we're living in New York at the Chelsea Hotel that's why we played that Leonard Cohen song there Chelsea Hotel what about that bit giving me head on an unmade bed oh dear I'm getting the ideas <laughs> I want the bed made first before any of that goes on young man while you're under my roof you live by my Rules. Sometimes we stand out on the balcony, Matt and I, and you know, and it makes me realise why Arthur Miller was driven to write a view from so the bridge. So noisy, isn't it, laying in beds? Because you can't. You have to have the door open because there's no air con. Yeah. And New York never sleeps. It never sleeps. It is the city that never so sleeps. that, or Russell on his laptop, shouting at his laptop. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I'm trying to make it function, talking to it like it's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Phew! It was. It said, it said the operating system closed uh, yeah. unexpectedly. Yeah. I had to go, no, it was unexpected to me. <laughs> it's un us, the humans. <laughs> you knew what you were doing. Talk to it like it's... Because <laughs> it turns itself you. on and off. It makes decisions on its own. I'm angry with it you know it shouldn't do it's that really odd it's like the third member of our little house <laughs> i love that little guy this is a letter to us as the subject is noel gallagher it's from sheila i hope the filming for your kerouac documentary is going well despite your trials at the chelsea hotel nice little rhyme well done Have you... well it is going quite well like what have we done so far we went to see jack kerouac's grave right and on jack kerouac's grave extraordinarily there was like so you know how people like in pair the chaise in paris Paris, like Jim Morrison's grave, they leave like sort of, oh, Jim died here. Let's leave, yeah, let's leave a spliff for Jim. It's what Jim would have wanted, a bottle of wine and a spliff. That's why he had that heart attack, because of all that booze and drugs that he took, poor old thought. Right, but by Jack Kerouac's grave, like people often leave tributes there as well. It was like, right, here's what there was. Some crackers, Ritz crackers, other crackers are available. Some bottle of milk, right, a bottle of Call milk. A milk chug. A milk chug. Because you're meant to chug it down, I suppose. Ugh. Chugging it down. All your sinuses all blocked up. Something out of a cow's boob. Chugging that down. It's disgraceful, really. And there was a, a, like a, a jar of peanut butter as well. And, and, a, and nice a Rice crispy. crispy cake. A Rice crispy cake. Sort of square. Went and visited him. A Rice crispy square, evidently. One was left behind. A family of them. Just left that by a grave. Why would dead American beat writer Jack Kerouac, while dead... Require <laughs> peanut butter, a rice crispy square, a milk chug, and some rich crackers. Other crackers are available. What's the p the point of that? It's really odd. But what's worse is that you stole some of it. Yeah, I stole some of that stuff because I thought. Yeah, you know, I think it is wrong to steal flowers from a grave because you think, well, those flowers are for the dead person. But peanut butter, you don't need that in the afterlife. I mean, you can't turn up at the gates of heaven to St. Peter and say, well, you know, if this might help sway you. <laughs> Crunchy or smooth! Let me in! Crunchy or smooth! And go into eternity all smothered in peanut butter. There's no way. Listen, so I nicked it. Sure, I nicked it. And Jack Kerouac, who was at heart just one big crazy bonkers rebel, would have done the self-same thing, I reckon. And I don't think he would have minded. Have you eaten any of it yet? Yeah, I just had a bit of it then. 
again on a on a rice cake. What, before the migraine? Oh my god, I'm being punished from beyond the grave. Oh, Kerouac's angry. He's kicking me inside the brain box. I've got Sid and Nancy in the corridors of the Chelsea Hotel. I've got Kerouac in my peanut butter. Everything I eat has got Icon Ghost on it. Icon Ghost is all over everything I'm doing and eating. Maybe I'm being punished. I don't think it's. I mean, don't. I'm not suggesting that we become a nation of grave robbers, but I'm just saying peanut butter to the dead. It's no use to him, is it? Mm. Whereas we, it also, it's given us an interesting insight. Also, we are going to throw it into the sea. We're going to go... In honour of him. Yeah, because we're driving right across America all the way to San Francisco, and then once we arrive in San Francisco, we shall then throw... The, I don't know if we should throw it into the sea, because that's littering, and that, that, that is bad. No, we put a message in it. What, like? It's glass, it'll be all right. That's true, it'll just bob about. Yeah, that's nice, message in a peanut butter jar. It's got a sort like of... Like the song. Like the song. I'm sending out an SMS. Hello, lovely Russ, says Missy. Will you end up in San Francisco, the hotbed of beat activity, during your on-the-road tour? I do hope so. I'd love to help assure you that you are famous here too. Thank you. God for that. Right. I like not being famous in New York. I don't like it. Although some English and Irish people do recognise me. I know. You, it happens about twice a day, doesn't it? Someone yeah. Someone comes over. Yeah. Well, they interview with that old fellow. He went, I'll be famous here soon. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to a literary agent. I thought we should know, you know, that I, he was Jack Kerouac and Ken Casey's literary agent. I thought it might be worth mentioning it. He wants to publish my bookie work when it comes out. The bookie work will be coming out. You. He loved me, that fellow. I loved him as well. There was a rapport between the two of him. Uh, him and elderly the gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I saw in there. <laughs> and I don't know if this going back to the booze was a good decision or not, but it's certainly making the interviews more fun. Uh, yes, we will be ending up in San Francisco, as a matter of fact, Missy. Uh, and whether we're famous or not on a broader scale, I'm obviously famous with you. And you're called Missy, and I'm assuming that's a girl's name. I mean, if you're a bloke called Missy, that makes Johnny Cash's A Guy Named Sue dilemma seem quite butch. So, Missy, even in fact, even if you're a bloke called Missy, it'd still be nice to meet him, wouldn't it? Mm. He'll be a lovely fellow. He'll have a good, strong spirit. We will be in San Francisco. We're going there. We're doing some poetry readings. Um, we did me, we did uh, some reading, didn't we? We did. We met a poetry teacher here called uh, Monica. She taught us some poetry, right? Now, it did go a bit wrong because I don't... Like, like G, are you listening to this, mate, actually? Yeah, Mr. Yeah. G is uh, the poet laureate of our generation. Um, well, here's <laughs> what happened, G. <clears throat> this lady was teaching me some... Like, she was teaching me and Matt poetry, right? And right. Like, what I think is she had decided in advance that she was going to wind me up, right? So she goes, right, write a poem, spur the moment. I wrote a poem, Matt wrote a poem. She starts... She does my poem first. I read it out. Then she starts going, well, actually, I've got it here. She starts having a go at my poem, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't mind doing a poem for a bit of a laugh to humour people while in the middle of a documentary about Jack Kerouac. What I do resent, however, is someone having a pop at my poem, written in the spur of the moment. She had a pop at it. She didn't tell me no rules. Listen to this, right? It was embarrassing okay. for everyone involved. There was a lot of tension, right? Look, look the poems... Are, I'll just read you the first bit, because we didn't get beyond that, because the argument got quite bad. He's lost confidence right. in the rest of his poem. Did, the, he, the did, of did the... he rip it up and then walk out in a tantrum? No. Tantra? It's still here. We carried on. It was mental because we had a proper argument, G. It was like, you know, sort of like this woman goes, um, look, I've, look, I said something like, it starts like this. She goes, write a poem about this moment now. So I goes, dense space, hot fug of nothing, punctured by ambling infantrymen, guarding the void. That poor bloke, all Spanish and drunk, asking for something in oblivion's mall, right? She oh, goes, so oh. deep. Isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's pretty it's heavy. Better, right? Actually, no, you read it now. Of course, it's all right, little poem, right? And like, what it was is we were sat on the street side. She goes, oh, don't use a word like a void. And I goes, yeah, but hold on. I goes, one of the themes of this poem is nothingness. So I'm going to use a lot of those name words like void, oblivion and nothing. They are going to come up because I'm trying not to repeat a word, you know, and I'm so that, that, that what them words are going to come up. And that she goes, oh, no, it's a cliche. She started having a right go at me. Matt starts to get a bit awkward. I goes, why is it a she cliche? She started being the devil's advocate for a bit of fun. Right. right. Mm. And he went, well, I'll tell you. You, you turn up here in your hair cut and dress, <laughs> young lady. <laughs> did, you, did you insult her poetically? Yeah, I did actually. Uh, well, yeah, actually used some big words, but then he resorted mm. to less poetic means. <laughs> you didn't start getting all jingoistic and saying that England's a land of Shakespeare and stuff like that. I goes, we got Shakespeare and Byron. <laughs> what poets have you got? Jack Paddywhack. <laughs> I'd like to see him write a bloody Romeo Juliet. Like that. And I got proper out of control. Matt was all embarrassed, <laughs> weren't you, mate? I was stuck in the middle and they had a proper argument. And yeah. I sat there. I had to hold Russell's hand under the table oh to try and God. calm him down. I wasn't fizzing with rage, but I was 
properly having a tantrum. Also, here. he accidentally drank some of my gin and tonic. Yeah, oh, he had a gin and tonic. Why are we supposed table. to be filming? Obviously Why has he got a, a recovering gin and... alcoholic. He picked up my drink, took a big gulp of it, <laughs> then took another gulp, then spat it out, realising what it was. Yeah, gin and tonic. And then he blamed the whole thing on, oh yeah, well, I, I'd been drinking gin <laughs> for like one mouthful. I was feeling supersonic drinking gin and tonic. I felt ridiculous, actually. It was ever so... It was awful. Did you speak yeah. your song on one of your songs, your rhyming songs? She would have liked that. What, my rhyming songs that I just make up on spur yeah. of the moment? Yeah, he's yeah. just so proud of those. But just don't use the word void. Yeah, no, I yeah. won't. Like, I can't feel... It's just, you know what I mean? Like, if, if, you, if someone tells you to write something creative, then you do, then she coats you right off, I think, that's out of order. Yeah, she wasn't very encouraging. She wasn't, was she? I then, think she was just being nice. Right, then she had a proper go at me, then she read... And then, like, as a, I think, a sort of a, sort of a mind-control technique, which if Dr Mengele had done it for the Nazis, the other Nazis would have gone... Dr. Mengele, don't be out of order. We've got to treat people with some kind nice of humanity. Because she thought that... As a mind control technique, she no, goes... No, wasn't. It's because my poem's brilliant. It was a... Well, this is Matt's poem. Judge it for yourselves. Please, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Right, See, look at that. Imagine <laughs> going to school with Russell. Imagine what it was like. <laughs> it was... This, this, this. Awful. Right. This is Matt's poem. Uh, Don't read it out. Um, hold on a minute. Sat is, well, it's a good poem. There's nothing wrong with your poem. That it's weren't not my a good point. Poem. It's just a load of words. But that's yeah. all poems are. Well, G will try and tell you that poetry is somehow important. I guess I, he's no, got it's a job just a load of, of words, actually. Just a load of words. <laughs> that's the spirit. Right, this is Matt's one. Sat in the street. It's too hot. Sat next to Roger Rabbit. Crossed out because he's saying that I'm like. If Matt thinks that I'm like a, a live action version of Roger Rabbit. He was all jiggering about. He couldn't sit still. Oh, we all jigger about. He was seen some of the people walking past the street. A Spanish homeless bloke with a metal rod was raging about down the mm. road. He was frightening. Then this bloke come along with stood a... Stood on his head. Yeah, stood He had a flip board on, sort of like a... Sort of, he had a sandwich board hung, hung, hung around his neck and he was just showing all different messages. Crazy he was. And he came over, sat next to me, touched me, didn't he? Touched yeah. me right on the, hit head. You on the head. Hit me on the head. Like I was a... I don't know. Well, like, under what circumstances no, that would be acceptable. When you're famous, so free, mate. No, it won't. We'll see an end to that. Oh, dear. Can't get that film out quick enough. Right. Sat next to Roger Rabbit. I crossed that out. That line. yeah, crossed out because Matt thinks I don't know. Why did you cross that out? Because it was stupid. Because Roger Rabbit. Well, when you started even... getting a grilling, I thought, oh, the hell? <laughs> did you? Well, oh no, better get rid of the Roger Rabbit line. If she's saying that about void and obscure, she's not going to like references to cartoon characters. <laughs> Under pressure, hung over as usual. That's my italics. An outhouse, a barnacle in a mental hospital with no walls in Cowboy Town. Quite nice. I liked in Cowboy. Although Matt goes, yeah. I used Cowboy Town because, you know, Not America, a man in a the cowboy frontier hat. spirit. You admitted you didn't see that man in the cowboy hat till after you'd written the poem. You put that because we were making jokes Look, about Vic the... Reeves saying Cowboy Town in Shooting Star once because Belinda Carlisle was on Shooting Stars. And, he, and she go, he goes, where are you from? She goes, oh, Denver. He goes, oh, Cowboy Town, like that. And we were laughing about that. Well, I put it and in you... to make you laugh, to try and cheer you up. Yeah, well, it didn't, did it? It hurt my feelings. Then what we've done is to try and reconcile the poetry teacher, Monica, me and Matt is we done like we had to write a poem where everyone did a line each and went round it and like Matt's what Matt one started like because there's the three of us sat there all in a terrible atmosphere on the pavement that goes at the Matt's first line is awkward threesome not the first that's Matt's opening line and then look at what the bonkers poetry teacher put you thought your carrots would do the trick She's the poetry <laughs> teacher! What does that mean? because you were drinking a carrot juice. Yeah, but I didn't think my carrots would do the trick. What trick? I was just having some carrots. Then I had a mouthful of gin because of her. Uh, then I put... Uh, then, oh, see if you can guess who wrote this line. Because one bit, like she said, oh, uh, oblivion's a cliched word. It goes, you're a cliche turning up here with your New York haircut and your bangles. Right? She's in New like York, that. though. Yeah, well, so what? She's Try from and... Mexico. Yeah. Well, this is what I wrote, or, or what someone mysterious wrote. <laughs> Oblivious to the cliché of the void, irritated, riled, annoyed. Right, and then when, even when she read that back, she goes, oh, that's a bad rhyme, to rhyme annoyed and uh, void. It's called a weak rhyme, or something like that. She goes, oh, then we have a special word for that in poetry circles. It's called a gay rhyme, or something like that. She wants to use some juvenile derogatory comment. Oh, we call that a... <laughs> 
Poem. That's the special <laughs> word we use. G, G you're a no, poet. She's made, she's made that up. She's made, she's it, made up. it up. She yeah. made it up I'm to so hurt me. About this. I'm not bitter. Right, and then and then Matt's put, what are the homeless carrying? Which is nice. You know, I've not got no, a problem a, with Matt's home, poems. I was wondering why they all have got to carry Why have the homeless stuff, got so much stuff? Look, if you're going to be homeless, commit to it. Stop having so much stuff. Wandering around with a flat pack Ikea bed under one <laughs> arm and a cuckoo clock under the other. Either you're homeless or you're not. Get a grip. This is the, the homeless aren't listening, unless they've got radios in those bags, in which case they might Some be listening. Some of them have radios. Some of them, Walkman radios. They've got little Walkman radios, right? They're, uh, <laughs> let's not, hold on, we're on the side of the homeless, aren't we? Right, be nice to the homeless, everyone, and for the last time, China, will you get out of Tibet? I have told you once, I have told you twice, they are still in Tibet, even now they're probably there. Right, then there's, oh, then there's this new bit. Uh, the way that tree... The way that tree could be funny, but my ass is hurting and apples are junk. That's from her again. The way that tree, the way, the way, uh, <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah, because I... tree bends, wasn't yeah, it? No, no, what it was is I goes, uh, I goes like, you know, the, I said, look, sort of, I was, was talking about language and semantics oh, or something. Yeah, and I goes, I look, this. that tree's just a tree or something. What did I say, no, Matt? she goes, you're not funny. And he went, I am funny. Like, that tree's a tree. Yeah, oh, like, wow. I'm objectively funny, indisputably, because my feelings were hurt by now, so I was saying really silly things. And I goes, I am funny the way that tree's a tree. And look, so she, why is she using her poem as an attack? She's a poetry teacher. If she does this to them well, kids at school. Her. It was, Right. Stuck in the middle of a right mess. Nonsense. You had a time of your life. <laughs> I didn't. Then, then it goes, that, the way that tree is a tree could be funny, but my arse is hurting and apples are junk. Well, don't put apples up your arse is my <laughs> advice <laughs> to any poetry teachers out there. Last place you should put them. Then there's a mad bit, right, because this, this bloke walked past who's called Bingo Gazingo. We just sat on a street in New York. Then this bloke, Bingo Gazingo. He's amazing, isn't he? He was an amazing man. He talked, how did he talk, Matt? He was sort of like, imagine... He talked like that. He talked like that. I'll tell you what he looked like. You know in the Muppets, the blokes that sit up in that box that are judging everything? They're called Ralph and Waldo or something like that, And they? You know the two blokes that are judging everything? Yeah. He looked like one of them. Statler and Waldorf. Statler and Waldorf. He looked like either... I can't remember which one. But imagine Statler and Waldorf. Imagine Jim Henderson called him in his office. Look, guys, uh, it's bad news. You're off the show. <laughs> but you can have this bottle of scotch. Now get out. Right? But, but two months later, that's what they would have done looked that, like. He'd um, old person shaving thing. He'd done that. He's, he just had he'd looked in the shaved mirror. his head. Like, it looks like a, it looked like a relief no, map sort of, of the grain, Balkans. Grain, he's, like he's, shaved, he's all his shaving. There's bits of there's little beard. countries and yeah. continents left over. Bits he'd shaved off. It looked like he'd just written with that razor blade across his face the way he writes poems. Although he might be coming here. We're trying. There's people now driving the streets trying to track down Bingo Gazingo because we wanted to get him on the show because we thought he was a lovable eccentric. Then like you know to lighten the mood, I goes yeah Bingo, you write a bit of poetry to try and you know to get rid of the hatred in the vibe and then he put in bingo put uh i what's it say to you with love here to love with you there yeah, lovely nice from bingo gazingo uplifting then i end it everything's just a bit daft really this is just needlessly elaborate toilet paper as a little sarcastic <laughs> silly little man at the end yeah that was childish and silly of me but i was under an awful lot of pressure okay so coming on late uh, we've got emma pollock i believe she's arrived in london gee is she sat in the studio with you yet or is she outside mate mr is she g around? Is she... yeah, she's yeah, definitely she's, there yeah, she's she's Around. Gee, we're, we're, we're just trusting em emptying you. up the jacuzzi right now. And um... uh, you're pro uh, listen, you don't, I don't want you interfering with that Emma Pollock. Remember, you are a representative of this radio show. While we and Matt are away being ambassadors for the UK and the US states of America, you have got to be responsible and look after Emma Pollock. I'm keeping the British end up. Oh, oh Christ. Oh no, God help us. Right now, also what we're doing is you might be aware that we're a bit obsessed with theme parks like Moomin Land, where we've been trying to send Mr. Nibs Moomin Land. It's a, a theme park in Finland. The theme is Moomins. Now, uh, there's also a place called Storyland over here in America. We're interested in it. We've got some information about it. We're going to talk to you about Storyland. And I'd like to encourage you, listeners to the show, to send us information about the worst theme parks you've ever been to or odd theme Why parks. Why are you saying worst? I'm not saying it. I don't want to bite anyone because we ain't been to Storyland. Yet, and to tell We've the truth, looked at the flyer. Yes, we have, and I'm looking forward to going. Text us if you wanna. Eight 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 no, two nine one. Eight eight two nine one. I just find it difficult because I know that it's the same as the frequency. Eighty eight to ninety one. It just confuses my yeah, mind. Yeah. The number two and two as a word. I can't cope with it inside my brain. This is from Jess in New Jersey. Hope you're having a good time in New York and it's treating you well. I'm from New Jersey. Can't believe you're only like 45 minutes away from me. Have you heard about the naked cowboy in Times Square? Thought you might want to know about him. I passed him on a school field trip last year. I didn't I've know about him. him. Yeah. You've seen him, a He's naked not cowboy? Fully naked. What's he got on? 
little hot pants. Well, that's not naked. That's the bit that's most Wouldn't needs be arrested, to be naked. Well, right, fair enough, I suppose. So what if he was truly naked? Is he always there? I've seen him twice. Was he, like, nice? Yeah, I thought he was giving something out or he was promoting something when I saw him. But he isn't. I just walked on. You just thought, leave him there, all nude. OK, well, I haven't seen him, and I, but I would like to see that naked cowboy. Are we going to get cowboy outfits? We're going to dress as cowboys. We've got into the idea of being cowboys, and dress as cowboys is something we shall certainly be doing. You're looking forward to it particularly, aren't you? Yeah. yeah cowboy on. hat, cowboy boots. We'll just go around like a couple of cowboys. We'll be OK. We might get dragged into the sex industry, but who cares? We'll earn us a bit of pocket money for our trip. We'll help lift the mood. This is from... Oh, yeah, this is an intro... Young Luke, who is a friend of the show, has sent us this email. A dog in China has adopted a piglet, nursing it as if it were her own. Hugh Hugh from Chongqing City adopted a piglet after her five pups were stillborn. Oh, she was very depressed for one week, then one night came home with a tiny black piglet following her, says the owner, Lao Yi. So, oh, the dog was depressed, firstly. That's sad, isn't it? Mm. I don't like to think of a dog being but depressed. But where'd she get the piglet? Where'd she get it from? It's like the equivalent of them Could women be like that. Babe pig in the city. Could be like that. Could be like that. You know, there's women that loiter around maternity wards nicking babies. I know. Well, this is the dog version. Lao Yi says that ever since Hugh Hugh has reared the piglet as if it were her own puppy, nursing it and taking her around, taking her around. <laughs> hey, let's go around. <laughs> the two have become celebrities in the neighbourhood, attracting many visitors, according to the Chongqing business papers. Business can't be very good in Chongqing if a dog and a pig is making the headlines. They need to focus on their economic strategy rather than leaving it to a dog and a pig to liven things up a bit. Lao Yi says over the course of one month, the piglet has already put on two kilograms in weight, drinking only dog milk. Ugh, dog Disgusting. Milk. That's not too... Imagine that. That's not two words that should be together. Never. Who wants dog milk? What kind of food Dogs. is that? I, want, I don't want anything that's come out of a dog's boob. But then is a cow's milk any better, as we've discussed, you know? Um, aha. Hello, Russell and Matt. My mum got hit in the face by two soleros and has a bruise on her cheek and a sore lip, but we still had fun in Blackpool. Thank you. Lots of love, Poppy. Well, there you are. So, you know, that needn't necessarily spoil a lovely day out in an ice cream van being struck in the face by a lovely, sweet missile. This is from Leron. Dear Russell, Matt, and Guy from Leeds. You're already being addressed on emails now, James. That's a responsibility. Amazing. You're, you're, part, you're part of the family of the show. Look at him, he's craning for the mic. Craning for the mic he is. I've never seen such naked ambition <laughs> in one so young. You'll do us all that job. You're this generation's David Frost, don't you? Leaping all over us. Right, it, listen to this. It continues later on. A jar of peanut butter is a considerate thing to leave by a grave. I've been trying to think of what I'd like to be left on my own grave by adoring strangers. I can't think of anything I would like better. What do you think would be the best thing to leave by a grave? Well, it's got to be relevant and pertinent. There's not a uniform thing except flowers, right? Mm. I mean, balloons just no, seems a bit... it should be a picture of me, if it's my grave. Yeah. In a little frame. You'd like that? wistful. Right. There's <laughs> no one will steal it. There's no pictures of you looking wistful. There's you, loads of them. You always just look confused. What about the pictures of me and the ice cream fan? Confused and drunk. <laughs> you do look confused and drunk in those ice cream van photos. OK, so we're over here in America. America is the land of the free, but it's also the land of the theme park. No theme park summarises America more than Storyland. There's a smile and an adventure around every corner at Storyland. Storyland is near Lowell, which is where we first went, because that's the birthplace of Jack Kerouac. Listen to this, some of the things you can experience at Storyland and tell me that you aren't even now thinking, how the hell should I get there? Spotlights and silly songs. That's just, that's going on <laughs> right there. If you want a spotlight or a silly song, you can have one. Get into the act at lively shows at Farm Follies, Circus World and Professor Biggle-Step's Loopy Lab. Farm Follies is not good. That Farm sounds Follies. like the sort of things you bring up about two-headed goats and stuff. It does. Or that pig. bestiality. Farm Follies, just like ridiculous things going on in a farm. Like, you know, oh, I got into a bit of a folly at the farm. Did you? What did you do? Well, I took advantage of a cow. Fly, splash, spin, sail, whirl, roll, ride. Enjoy That's a poem. Well, yeah, some people, Monica, the poetry teacher, would say so. <laughs> unless I wrote it, in which case she'd probably tear it up, chew it up and gob it into my face. <laughs> Enjoy the flying fish, bamboo shoots, cuckoo clock and spill. Cuckoo clock and spill, I suppose. Cuckoo. Yeah, but nonetheless. <laughs> Cuckoo? Say that. Cuckoo! Cuckoo!
Caco. Caco. My cup. Caco. Because uh, it reminds me of the word cuckold, I suppose, and I liked it. Tractors. Tractors. That's, That's on good. there on the list. Clock and like right. There's the cuckoo clock and spiel. Right. Tractors. Polar coaster. Pumpkin coach and many other family favourites. And other puns. Yeah. Then this is this, friendly faces. These are like the subheadings. Then there's the list of what things are going on. Meet favourite storybook characters. Humpty Dumpty, Cinderella, Three Little Pigs, Mother Goose and others. Why doesn't anyone own those characters? Because Disney ain't been bothered to do it. Like they've got, all they've done is they've gone to Disney World and gone, right, which things aren't copyrighted? Humpty Dumpty, we'll have him. Because yeah, we've discussed on the show before. Well, I so, you should buy the rights to Humpty Dumpty. I'd love to get the millions. rights. Of course we could. Then no one else could discuss him. Also, why is Humpty Dumpty an egg? There's no mention in the lyrics that he is an egg and yet he is portrayed as an egg what's the point it's absurd that he's always reduced to being an egg right so uh playgrounds abound play at the oceans of fun grandfather tree little dreamers there's all these things and like and then look then the information starts to get like a bit obscure i think uh what is lockers are located in mother hubbard's cupboard behind Dumpty dumpty's wall we shouldn't be out <laughs> the lockers shouldn't be like you know hey let's sell the place on these lockers diapers are sold at our gift shops diaper changing facilities are located in the restroom nursing mothers can enjoy privacy in the mama's house adjacent to most of the restroom the mama's house is typically a bordello or massage parlor so that could be confusing if you're wandering there mama's oh hello house. ladies i see you already for their, me um, weather get out clauses right listen to this they're trying to get you a story land under almost any circumstances rain rain question mark come and play exclamation mark <laughs> no need to wait for another day rainy days are a part of summer and they can be a lot of fun no they can't as well i suppose they can but don't go you know you needn't necessarily go to Storyland as a result most of our rides and attractions stay open in the rain though some may close temporarily during downpours or thunder and lightning well okay you know once like you know it's clear that god's wrath is being expressed through weather we might consider closing Many families enjoy many families enjoy visiting in the rain. Lines of any kind are practically non-existent. Yeah, I will go in the rain yeah, because it's horrible and it's raining. Yeah, because people have gone. It's raining. I'm staying at home to live my life and watch the telly. Lines of any kind are practically non-existent. And what lines of any kind? What variety of lines could there be? I mean, I can think of the obvious drug reference there. That shouldn't be happening in Storyland unless the story is Scarface starring Al Pacino. See that pelican fly right look at this that would be i know i've said this before scarface land say. no 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 but to go to a, a theme park on drugs would be intense wouldn't it to go, go to a theme park all drugged up but be a laugh yeah. and what and do, what do you want to do go on you'd well, like to go in the wheelchairs wouldn't you you, <laughs> you said that before you said you want to go to no, a theme park on loads what of drugs was, get in the wheelchairs if you were on drugs and mm. someone pushed you around in a wheelchair, yeah. no one would, could, could ever t say, so, are you on drugs? Are you on drugs? Right? Yeah. So bear with me. If you were wheeled around on drugs, you could have fun there and no yeah. one would bother you. That's, That's true. all I'm saying. That, that is not a suggestion. This is BBC Radio 2. We're not, not suggesting that you go take a load of drugs. And get in a wheelchair. Turn up at Fort Park in a wheelchair for a laugh. That is not an endorsement of that, frankly, criminal behaviour. I was just saying it could be done by an idiot. It, an idiot could do that. That's the sort of thing an, a drugged idiot would do. Even a drugged idiot in a wheelchair who is in there rightfully and necessarily shouldn't do that. Lines of any kind are practically non-existent and when you've dressed for it, rain can be quite enjoyable. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, I'm in a scuba diving costume. I'm having the time of my life. Rain gear is yeah. sold at our gift shops and guest uh, services. Cashing in. Cashing in you on the need, rain. It'd be good to wear one of those yellow fisherman's outfits, though. What, they, that, they're called sou'westers? Yeah. You'd like to dress up in sou'westers and just hang out in the rain? Well, okay. In a wheelchair on drugs. Yes, <laughs> that's, yes. The, well, that's your idea of fun, is it? Get dressed up like a fisherman, drug yourself unconscious almost, then be pushed <laughs> around in a wheelchair while people smile sympathetically <laughs> at your drooling face. 
If a dry, listen to this bit. If a driving rainstorm suddenly starts up and continues, listen to this. This is the most confusing piece of language I've ever encountered. If a driving rainstorm suddenly starts up and continues non-stop for a half hour or more with no sign of relief as guests exit the park during the storm, we will issue rain checks to return in the current season. We do not refund admission of dollars, right? But look at that. Look at the conditions for you to and you don't get, get the your thing. money back. So you all don't. You're getting is to come back at you can come time. back another rainy so how day. Many conditions? Right, these are the conditions of for getting a token to come back another day. If a driving rainstorm suddenly starts well, it's up, not driving. It's, it's got to be driving. Go, well, it's not. That, it's not driving, sir. That is not a driving rainstorm. I, I, I must tell you that is it's cycling. It's meandering. It's ambling. It's wandering. If a driving rainstorm suddenly starts up. Oh right. So if it's if it's like just if spitting. it's incremental. Uh, it was spitting, ma'am. It was spitting. It was clear. That was not sudden. It was obvious <laughs> there was going to be a rainstorm. If you didn't pick that up, you don't deserve a token. We don't want you back in Storyland. If a if a driving rainstorm suddenly starts up and continues non-stop for a half hour or more. So if it went for 25 minutes, there was a brief pause. Brief respite, and then carried on I'm for another. I'm ma'am, there was a pause. You remember that moment over there when Storyland <laughs> seemed fun briefly for a few seconds? Because of that, you're getting no token. You're joking if you think you're getting a token. Then it continues, right? So look at the conditions so far. Half an hour or more with no sign of relief. No, he can't even have a sign of relief. Hold on, is that some relief? No, it's not actually relief. It was just a sign of relief, a signifier, a symbol, an abstract idea that relief might occur. No, you can't have your money. You see that moment where briefly there was a silver line into the cloud? Yeah, but hold on a minute. We couldn't tell if that was a reflection. No, sorry, it was a sign of relief. Get out of Storyland. You're not welcome, punks. You're a wise ass. Get out of that wheelchair. Listen to this then. We've no, we've no, yeah, sign of relief as guests exit the park during the storm. So the storm oh, so you has can't to be. Go, oh, earlier there was a storm. It's ruined our day. Can we go now? And no. Get our money back. Get on. Get back in there and enjoy yourselves. There's no storm now. Get in there. Party time. Go to Doctor Bebeckle's Land of the Free. All the things have got stupid names. Pixie Kitchen, Pixie Tree, Old Woman in the Shoe. What's that? I mean, there there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. Yeah. Old woman in the shoe. I don't want to go and just look at an old woman in a shoe. It just sounds like an homeless lady who's lost one of her shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds like the Little Dreamers play area, Swan Boats, Let's Pretend Imagination Shop. What's that? That's a gift That's shop. A shop. Ooh, it's imagination shop. Let's pretend we've got an imagination. Let's and pretend a shop. this pencil's worth five dollars. <laughs> Let's enter into a consensus that it's ten dollars for a notepad with a picture <laughs> of Humpty Dumpty on the front. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Right, so, okay. So even if all those things happen, just to quickly to check, right, I'll read it out, Matt, and you count the conditions right. as they go past. If a driving rainstorm... Suddenly, That's two, yeah? right? Yeah, yeah. You count them as they go by. Driving so say them out loud. Dr if a driving rainstorm suddenly starts up. That's two conditions. That's and three. Three. Go on then, right? You say one, two, three as they pass, right? We'll go back okay. to the beginning. You go one, and then two, like that. It'll be like a quiz show. Here, there's that lady from the front. Come in here, you. Oh, she's gone now. I didn't want to marry her or anything. I just found her interesting because she didn't believe we were real radio people because we were such idiots. Because you haven't got photo ID. Oh, who needs photo ID? Just Everyone. go. Just go, I am me. It's obvious I'm me, ain't it? Yeah, Not grab her. Real. Make her come in. We're going to try and get the security lady. Right, right. If a driving one, rainstorm two, suddenly three. starts up and continues non-stop for, for half an hour or five, more uh, with no sign of relief six, as guests exit the park during seven, the storm seven. we will issue right, seven conditions seven conditions you can't just go it's raining can I go well we've got these seven conditions we've got Jim on the line he is spokesperson for Storyland hello Jim Good evening. Jim, it's very kind of you to come on the line. What, uh, As a spokesperson for Storyland, what do you have to do? <laughs> I mean, you're already a person. Yes, indeed, and I'll, I'll speak as much as you'd like me to speak here tonight. Uh, if you give me the word go, I'll continue to speak about Storyland, which go! opened in 1954, <laughs> and we've been entertaining families ever since. How? Uh, by sharing with them, bringing to life the stories that they grew up with. 
really? Well, a lot of the stories I grew up with were terrifying. I, I don't want them brought to life. Dirty devils turned up in my stories. Let me tell you, Uncle Jim. So, um, yeah, Jim, what is it that makes us... Uh, because we've been reading about Storyland. It's some, I'd like to know a bit more about some of the things. What, uh, for example, goes on in the Let's Pretend Imagination Shop, Jim? <laughs> Well, uh, as you might expect, imaginations run wild in there. We have all kinds of costumes in there that kids try on, and uh, uh, they become things uh, that they think they might become uh, or want to become later on in life. What, like wives or like perhaps... Transgendered. <laughs> Transgender <laughs> um, Aphrodites. They must never become that, Jim. Well, I don't them. know if we have any of those costumes in there. Well, you know, I'd look into that for a start, because we, we're English gentlemen, and we can probably help you with a few <laughs> tips on the, uh, on the theme park front well, okay we're always looking for input what um saucy devil what other things do you have to do like do you do you get a lot of you know why does storyland need an official spokesman what's going on are you doing something controversial in there <laughs> uh, i think being on this show perhaps is as controversial as we'll get <laughs> <laughs> good because it is quite controversial with <laughs> cheeky monkeys on this program um okay well let's just talk through a few things like and then we'll get to that you know because we, we're pretty tempted to come to storyland and one of the things says like even if you're 350 miles away in new york you should make the effort to leave new york city the city that never sleeps thriving hotbed of culture uh, music and sexiness and get your ass in the story Storyland, uh, what is g going on there to validate that suggestion? <laughs> well, you know, that's the first time I've heard it termed that way, but uh, you do indeed have new ways for us to promote the park. I'm, I'm glad we're having this conversation. But... I want to help. I think, listen, let me just say candidly at the beginning, if you're listening to this podcast, and we've got a lot of listeners in uh, New Jersey, New York, San Francisco, we've been speaking to people from all those places today, Get yourselves to Storyland right now because there's some pictures there like Humpty the Dumpty. <laughs> <laughs> Humpty the Dumpty. <laughs> Humpty the Dumpty looks frightening in, in your Storyland, I say. What is the inspiration behind him? Cause he looks well, as, uh, as you mentioned earlier about the stories from your childhood, a lot of the fairy tales that uh, uh, everybody is familiar with were uh, really stories to help make kids behave properly. So a lot of, uh, a lot of the things you'll see with stories along those lines. What's Humpty uh, Dumpty? What's the, uh, sub what's the moral of that? What's the subtext of Humpty Dumpty? What's the message like behind the story of Humpty Dumpty? Don't be an egg sat on a wall. That's not <laughs> going to help anyone. <laughs> Well, you know, again, I don't know that he was ever really defined as an egg. That's he our wasn't. representation of him. That's true, because he doesn't look like... Actually, your representation doesn't look like an egg. It looks a bit like a boob with a sort <laughs> of little porcelain face, is what it looks like. And what I'd like to know is... Let's just... Hold on, Jim. Let's go through the lyrics of Humpty Dumpty. Okay. And, and work out what it means. Right. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Now, what is a child supposed to learn from that, Jim? <laughs> what can what can he learn? Well, he can learn uh, to to behave himself. <laughs> learn to behave yourself. <laughs> Don't sit on a wall because otherwise, all the king's horses and king's men will not help you. Horses wouldn't be helpful in that situation. They've got stupid hooves. They can't pick nothing up, can they? The idiots. Great big long faced lunatic. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Humpty. I'm trying my best, but I can't hold a spanner. <laughs> That's how they would go. They'd literally do that. And what about your pot, Jim? I'm still recommending quite powerfully Storyland. Um, Appreciate that. Um, right, what would you do? Say that someone turned up there on lots of drugs and booze and sat in a wheelchair, like, so that they could have a real laugh. Would you chuck them out? Oh, uh, that would be our policy, yes. Uh, <laughs> Good. And alcohol are not allowed at the park, and anyone under the influence is really uh, discouraged from How would you visiting. approach telling them? What if they were pretending that it wasn't as a result of uh, drugs and alcohol, but a, a genetic condition, <laughs> and they were sat in a wheelchair, with, like, pretending that, this terrible person? Well, if they, if they had enough of a conspiracy working there to, uh, to sell that to us, I suppose we'd try to help them out. Brilliant, it could be done, but I would never recommend that to anyone because it's childish and perhaps even Terrible evil thing. evil thing to do, but it could work. Now, the other thing, Jim, that interests me quite a lot about Storyland is your policy, and you're the spokesman around what happens if it rains on you at Storyland. Uh, can you just tell us what is your policy if you're at Storyland and it starts raining? A driving rainstorm. 
A driving rainstorm? Well, we'd be happy to uh, give you a rain check to come back another day. A rain check? That's what it's even called. But it says here, right, like, <laughs> it says, if it, uh, listen to this, we've counted seven conditions, right? <laughs> if a driving rainstorm, so it can be a rainstorm, but if it's not driving, you're not getting a rain check, right? That's correct, yeah, we're open even in the rain. Rain's a part of summer. Pa rain is part of summer, just accept it. That's the slogan they use. That's, Rain's that's the correct. part of summer. Yeah, Does it rain a lot in Storyland <laughs> more than any other, any other Slips part of America? Slips and falls are a part of summer. <laughs> <laughs> Razor blades and ice creams are a part of summer. <laughs> People pretending to be <laughs> incapacitated in wheelchairs is a part of summer. Um, okay, so look. Okay, so there's got to be a driving rainstorm. Right, listen to this. If a driving rainstorm suddenly starts up, why has it got to be suddenly, Jim? Well, I think if people recognize that it's raining when they enter the park, they should expect that it will still be raining when they get to the other side of the fence there and they and they join us in the park. So right, fair they're enough. Make, they're making a decision to uh, enter in the rain and have a great time, which many people do. Brilliant. If they just come into that park and it's like, you know, and they, they, it's bloody well raining before they get in there, they can't expect a refund because it's raining anyway. I'm with you actually on that. Right. <laughs> and then it goes, and continues non-stop for half an hour or more with no sign of relief. Now, what is a sign of relief? <laughs> well, fortunately, we're up here at the beautiful White Mountains of New Hampshire, and so you can look to the uh, west and know uh, as the weather is moving through, you can see it clear off before it actually does clear off. So you'll know if it's uh, going to clear up or if it's right. going to stay in rain for a while. So there are signs of relief that we can see. So if someone comes and goes, look, I want to go home now, I hate it here, you'll go, look over yonder, there's a sign of relief above those white mountains. Now get in the let's pretend imagination shop and pretend it's not raining or I'll punch your face in. <laughs> Is that what would happen, Uncle Jim? Uh, I, I doubt it would happen quite that way. Oh, I'm only mucking about. What are you saying, Matt? Has anyone actually ever successfully got a rain check? <laughs> Has it ever happened in the history of story, lads? 54 years? Maybe with a Big We're a legal lot more team. generous than those uh, conditions would lead you to believe. Do you think that O.J. Simpson would be able to get a rain check, <laughs> even with if he's a full legal team? Sorry, Mr. Simpson, your gloves are clearly wet. You'll stay in and have the time of your life in Storyland. Uh, Jim, you, oh, we've not made you angry, have we? Oh, not at all. Ah, oh, good. Uh. You're, you're a good spokesman, and I think that anyone listen to this now, get to Storyland, whether it's raining or not, and even if there is a driving rainstorm, and even if it does start suddenly, and even if it continues with half an hour more, and there is a sign of relief, you just bloody well stay in there and make Jim's life easy as possible. Get in that Let's Pretend Imagination shop and dress yourself up like a gorgeous transvestite. Jim, I've enjoyed talking to you enormously. Well, thanks for having me on the show. I enjoyed it myself. Can we come to Storyland for free if ever we want to, because we've been so kind? Oh, you've been extremely kind. Yes, give me a call ahead of time. I'll make sure we get you in. Reserve us some wheelchairs. Thank you very much, <laughs> Jim. You are a lovely man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, Jim. There he goes. That, uh, if anyone's offended by that, we're only mucking around. And, uh, you know, oh, I feel so ill. I've got such a bad migraine, Matt. I've got a headache. What should we do? Right, we're going to listen to what's Emma Pollock is there. Left, you know. What, so should we just let, let Emma Pollock play a song? Emma, are you there, dear? Yeah, hi, how are you doing? S sorry for. Hello, well, we're all right. I've got a migraine. Um, but, like, sorry for not letting you uh, play yet. But why don't you like what uh, God, I heard you on the radio and I thought you was all dead enchanting and enticing so it'd be oh, ever so thank you oh no not at all um it would be nice if you played something for us would yeah. you yeah well yeah what are you, what I'll are you going to play I'm going to play the acid test which came out on Monday it's just the, the latest single that is a record by Emma Pollock not a recommendation of how to behave in Fort Park <laughs> uh now so uh M Mr G uh I hope he's behaving himself is he is he? He's not well, troubled you, Emma. He's, no, he hasn't. He's been very, very placid and calm and very, Be very nice. That is a veneer. Behind that veneer, <laughs> yeah, he's a dangerous man. Emma, I wonder if you'll come back because we didn't get to interview you properly on account of you know time constraints. The show is a, you know, people want to listen to the proms. I don't even know what that word's short for. Proms was it? Promy granite promenade. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. So, um, but I'd rather have listened to you than proms. Let me tell you. Especially Terry Wogan's gone home. He's drunk himself to sleep after. I, I think I heard some of it on the radio in the in the taxi in the way in. What some proms or Wogan? Mm. Um, I heard I heard something that Wogan was presenting, and I heard that. Uh, That's the proms, Emma. Well, I, I, do you know something? I, it, I, it was a, it was. Just, I heard I heard the Archie Emma. Shaw's concerto for clarinet. Listen, don't pretend you know a lot about music. <laughs> you said you heard something on the radio. Now, Mr. G has got to summarise the show with poetry. Let's welcome Mr. G. Thank you, Emma Pollock.
Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Come on in, G. Stop mucking about. There's some news to go. Right. Some people think it's important. The news has been spread. Today has been left. The start has been made. It's the beginning of a quest. New York City is the place. The hotel's a disgrace. A tiny room, a ransacked tomb, and a guilty two with a Bruno Pug face. Who would have thought a little poem could cause such distress? A void could be destroyed with the caress of emptiness. I suggest that laptop mishaps contribute to the stress. Take a leaf from Wogan's book. Early to rise, early to rest. Mr. G! Poet Laureate, now that's what I call poetry. And he used the word void. What about that? Well done, G. That was fantastic. Thank you, Emma Pollock, for coming on our radio show. Do come back again when I'm there physically and can uh, uh, use charisma yes, yes, on you. Know, oh, <laughs> okay. I um, so. Well, thank you. Oh, hello. So, all right then. So, right. Okay. We've probably run over now, I imagine. So, why don't we... This is, uh, thank you, everyone that's contributed to our show. Thank you, good people of New York. We'll be broadcasting to you next week from a place called Boulder. It's not even actually a Boulder. It's in Denver or something. Please now, Colorado. join it. Colorado. I mean, they're all countries in America. I don't know what goes on. Right, okay. So, from <laughs> 88 to 91 FM, here's some things. What's going on in our planet? No!